Hello and welcome to Magi David's Lab. I'm your host, David Hoffman, and in this episode, we'll be taking a look at the memory map in Microchip's 8-bit PIC microcontrollers. So, what exactly is a memory map? Well, to answer that question, I think it's best to start with explaining the different types of memory in a PIC MCU. They are Program. This type of memory holds the instructions that the CPU executes when running. Other than keeping track of how much program memory is used, you shouldn't have to worry too much about program memory. There are, however, instances when you will want to pay careful attention to the placement of code in program memory, but that's a topic in itself and will be covered in an upcoming video. Random Access Memory, or RAM for short, is the type of memory used to hold temporary information for the program that the CPU is running. Next, Peripheral Access Memory. This type of memory is directly tied to internal MCU configure registers as well as the microcontroller's I.O. ports. And finally, Data EEPROM, or Electrically Erased Programmable Read-Only Memory. This type of memory is exactly like program memory in the sense that it will retain whatever is stored in it even when the power is off. Data EEPROM memory is controlled by the user through program code allowing data to be stored for later retrieval by the program or the user. Keep in mind that this type of memory is not available in all PIC microcontrollers. All these different types of memory are split up into two main groups in a microcontroller. The first, program memory, is stored in its own area and accessed via a dedicated data bus. The second, data and peripheral and EEPROM memory are located in another dedicated area and access via a dedicated bus. It's the second area that we'll be looking at in this video. In a lot of ways, memory in an MCU is just like a high-rise, with each floor having its own address, the floor number. And in a lot of ways, a memory map is a lot like the directory you might see in some high-rises. A memory map tells us what is located on each floor of the high-rise. And we need to know this information to properly control what the microcontroller does and how and when it accesses the outside world. Now, in a memory map, the floors are called registers, and the high rise is called a bank. And we'll be using these terms for the rest of this video. If we take a look at the memory map for a PIC 16F882, we can see each address and what it equates to. And you'll notice that there's not just one bank, but several with each bank having a different number of registers. You might also notice that some registers have the exact same name. That's because these registers are accessed far more frequently than others, and since you can only access one bank of memory at a time, these registers are mapped to each bank. You can think of it as a bridge reaching from one high-rise to another, and whatever happens on one floor also happens on the same floor in the other buildings. Okay, so let's say we have to put some data into the port A register so that the data will appear on the input output pins of port A. First we need to issue the command bank select port A. This tells the CPU to change the currently active bank to the bank that contains port A. Next we need to move the data we want to put on port A into the working register. For this example we'll move a literal value into W. So the command move LW 0xFF will copy the value FF, that's 255 in decimal, into the working register. Next we copy the value in the working register into port A with the command move WF, port A. Now let's pretend we have to access the register tris A to change its value. We just need to repeat the above steps and the code would look like this. Bank select tris A move LW 0xFF move WF tris A Okay, if at any point we want to access the PCO, status, or FSR registers, we don't need to do a bank change. Since these registers are mapped to each other, it doesn't matter what bank we are in. They can be accessed from any bank. 
Accessing RAM is identical to this system, and in the 16F882, RAM starts at address 20 and runs up to 7F. However, address 70 through 7F are shared throughout all the register banks. This is called shared memory and is available for users to use for those variables that need to be accessed at any time without having to switch banks. I hope you found this video useful and be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Take care and thanks for watching.